Okay, so I've had um, a few people talk to me this week on addiction to thinking. And it's very much where I'm at as in my own path, you know, the, the addiction to thoughts. Uh, and I really love, uh, that's what I'm passionate about at the moment. So here's the thing, the Course in Miracles says, all my thoughts are meaningless. It, the Course in Miracles does not say that there is this, any thought in your head which has any meaning. Um, that's the thing you've got to understand because everyone will, will read that, like all my thoughts are meaningless. And yet they will still be thinking after they've done that course. That's because you've still got lots of thoughts in your head which are still special. You haven't rendered every single thought in your head until it's meaningless. So if you were just to use, you can just use that one lesson from A Course in Miracles for Enlightenment. But the lesson is every single thought in my head is I need to make it meaningless, not just uh, make a few thoughts meaningless will not work. You have to make every single thought. How do I know? How do you know if you've made it? Well, it's obvious how, because if you still have any thoughts left, those thoughts are still meaningful for you. So let's say you have um, 10,000 thoughts in your head, which are meaningful. Now, if you keep doing all, you know, like, like cheesecake might be a meaningful thought for you. Um, uh, like your husband may be a meaningful thought for you, like um, your age may be a meaningful thought for you, um, like, you know, all of these thoughts. So as long as any of these thoughts, you know, when you make, for example, your age meaningless and you never think about age ever again, then you've got success with making that one thought meaningless but you still may have like a thousand thoughts still left, which are meaningful for you. So you, when you've made every single thought that you've got in your ego 100% meaningless so that you no longer get any more thoughts come up because every single thought and you're in stillness and presence and flow all the time, then you'll have done that lesson and you don't know no longer to do it. Of course, of course you don't need to do it because you'll have no more thoughts left. So it's finished. Now, if you've done that and you're still thinking well, those thoughts are still special. So there's still more work to be done. So that one lesson is sufficient to take you to enlightenment, you see. But uh, you can't stop until it's, all, it's finished. Otherwise, you'd just be... But if you've made every single thought in your head meaningless except chocolate cake, the, the thought on chocolate cake, then you'd still be in your head, you see. You'd just be thinking about chocolate cake the whole day. And you'd have to... And you still have to, like, let go of that thought. You have to be willing to let go and say... Your ego goes, I can let go of every thought except chocolate cakes. Well, you're not going to get enlightened then, you see, because you won't give up chocolate cakes. You see, everyone has their special thoughts. They're willing to let go of all the other thoughts, but they still want to keep these thoughts. That often happens with forgiveness. I've met many people who say, I'll forgive everybody except this one person. Well, then I say, you're not going to get there. Because if you're going to forgive everybody except that one person who you want to hate forever, uh, you're not going to get there because that's the whole point of it. You have to you have to let go of that one person you don't want to let go of. If there's one thought you don't want to let go of, well, you're not going to get to enlightenment until you'll be willing to let go of that one thought that you don't want to let go of. Everyone is happy to let go of thoughts that they're not they're happy to let go of. But some people have special thoughts. Some people have special relationships. Some people have special ideas that they're not willing to let go of. So that's the problem. Um, so, um, oh yes, addiction to thoughts. So you've got to understand there's different levels. You can't just take addiction to thoughts on an intellectual level. You have to have an intent. There's different levels of your ferocity uh, of how much progress you're making with your addiction to thoughts. So uh, what I would suggest to someone who's off, uh, who wants enlightenment um, is that you have to get to the place where it's like a burning momentum, where it's a passion in your life. In the beginning, you'll ha it'll be much slower. It'll be more like a fight when you're an early student. But you want to get to a place where, like, you get so ferocious uh, that it's like you're just sitting down in your room and you're either saying, all oh, my thoughts are meaningless or cancel my addiction to thoughts, or you're doing the observer with, you know, like that's the only thing that's important to you. It's absolutely ferocious. And that's what Hawkins said, and that's what's necessary. At the, at the last minute, you need to be gaining momentum where it's like, and the closer you get to enlightenment, the more you become ferocious because you've got less ego in you. So there's only a few more thoughts left. And so there's like a, 
there's a momentum to burn off what's left of the ego because you're feeling the light start to, the early days are more harder because you've got so many thoughts, you're not getting a, a good connection to that infinite light. So the ego is quite strong. But if you've been doing it, for, if you just do a cancel my, my addiction to thoughts for five years, you're gonna make huge progress. So then you should be much more ferocious and the thought should be much weaker. So you wanna be like, um, you don't wanna do anything like, when I talk about addiction to thoughts, you don't want it to be an intellectual process. It has to be very passionate, but it's not gonna be passionate in the early days. You're gonna feel like it's very difficult in the early days because you've got so many thoughts and so little connection to the light that it seems like your ego will be, you'll be discouraged most of the time. That's normal. Uh, you have to do a lot of clearing before it gets easier. Uh, your ego is going to fight tooth and nail, but you do want to get to a passionate place where that's your only goal. Otherwise, your ego is going, just going to make an intellectual process and you're going to give, give up and say it's too difficult. Uh, what else can I say on addiction to thoughts? I mean, for me, all I, you know, is one of the great things in this world for me, and Hawkins said it, is that people want to understand things. It's not about intellectually understanding things. That's the problem. Like letting go of the addiction to thoughts is not understanding that it, that's, you, need, you don't need to understand addiction to thoughts. You need to be in the, you need to be in the experience that you're having less thoughts in the day, less and less thoughts in the day over and over again as a spiritual experience, uh, not as opposed to an intellectual understanding. So when you're getting to an advanced student, you, uh, let go of understanding. It's really more about not being in your head. Apply practical exercise. Prayer, I cancel my belief in, in, in thoughts. I'm an infinite being. All my thoughts are meaningless. My thought about cheesecakes is meaningless. That's application. Trying to understand that and intellectually understand it and be in your head for the rest of the day, that's, your, that's an ego mechanism of avoiding the spiritual uh, growth. Um, I just have to say that, you know, like, in the beginning, in, when you're an early student, understanding a few things might be useful, but really what you're understanding as a spiritual student is spiritual application. You don't want to understand so you know your head. You want to understand like a prayer and then do the prayer. You want to understand what is cancel beliefs and then do the canceling beliefs. Uh, so you're actually trying to do actions to let go of your addiction to thoughts. It's not about learning things and just being in your head over and over again and learning new ideas and not applying them. Okay, that's what's coming up for me today on addiction to thoughts. Okay, let's, let's say something a bit nicer. Um, like if you've ever had spiritual experiences where you felt stillness, the holy presence of God, timelessness and flow, and the whole day miraculously unfolding, that's like you're free of the addiction to thoughts. That's what I want. That's inspirational. That's, a, that's just wonderful to be in those heavenly places. That's why it's worthwhile. If you've had a spiritual experience, remember it. That will give you passion to let go of your, your being in your head all the time. So understand this. Hawkins said this message, it was his first book, Power Versus Force. When you're in your head, you're trying to force life to be what your ego wants it to be. You're forcing people. You're forcing your, your mental faculties. That's a very low vibration because force uh, brings counterforce. If I try and force somebody to do something like, hey, you, I want you to do this for me, they will push back, you know, but when you're in the infinite realm, then you're just a channel of light. People will just automatically soften and be happier in your presence. But if you just stay in your head, trying to control people, places and yourself, it's a place of force and it's a very low vibration. So that's why I want to be out of my addiction to thoughts. I want to be in that miraculous place of the infinite stillness and divine realm of, 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 of holiness, of God, of oneness. So being in my head is going to be a life of struggle and pain. That's why I want to let go. A lot of people think, no, if I'm in my head and I'm thinking and I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard, I'm going to have a better life. For me, that's rubbish. Um, that's going to be a very difficult life. So that's some, something I would say. It says, of course, in miracles. Miracles aren't for being in your head. Miracles come from letting go of being in your head. So you, you, you want the miracles. You don't want to be in your head in the ego. 
So my experience is I love being in the infinite realm. It's much more easier. There's much more flow. There's much more rapids. The right people show up at the right time. The right opportunities occur. It's like everything's divinely orchestrated. Being in my head, it's like everything is much, it's just a harder life and things tend to go wrong. 